beneath the setting sun Our happy cowboys work is fun Let's have a drink on that, eh? Oh, boy. Come on, fill up this whole hot box. That's Joe's letter, ain't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what kind of trouble do you suppose he's in? I don't know but it must be something pretty bad. Because Joe's not the kind to holler for help unless he really needed it. That's right. When he was riding range with us down in Texas, he always took care of any trouble that came his way. Sickness was the only thing that ever licked him. When his lungs went bad... But I thought he'd got well since he came up here in Arizona. That's what he wrote me. Said him and his dad had bought a little ranch and they was going to stock it with some good cattle. Well, how far you reckon it is from here to Joe's place? About a mile or two from here. Come on, let's go. That must be Joe's place over there. Chicken dinner? To throw the voice for a greater distance, it is imperative that Is this Joe Jackson's place? Oh, yeah. Who are you? Who is who? Did that mule say something? Oh, I'm out here and things. Sure, he talks. Gable, say something for the gentleman. A tank a go home. A want to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bob Blake. I'm looking for a friend of mine, uh, Joe Jackson. Well, this is his place, all right. I'm Slim Perkins. I think it'd be a good idea if you go into the house and talk to Joe's sister. Joe's sister? Where's Joe? I don't know. Say, mister, would you sell me that talking mule? Well, now, <laughs> I'll see about that. Hello, are you Joe's sister? Yes. Well, uh, I I'm Bob Blake. Oh, yes. I've often heard Joe speak of you. I'm Betty Jackson. Joe used to work with you down in Texas, didn't he? Uh, yes, ma'am. But what are you doing way up here? Well, I had a letter from Joe and brought some of the boys and we come up to see if we could help out some. You say Joe wrote you a letter? When was it written? It says here it was written on the 16th in Mesa Canyon. Thank heaven, then he's not dead. Dead? What do you mean? I haven't seen my brother for three weeks. He disappeared just like father did. Only we found father dead, shot in the back. Do they know who did it? No, but Joe said he'd find out if it took the rest of his life. He was all worked up the day he disappeared. Said he'd found something, but wouldn't tell me until he was sure. And I thought they'd got Joe, too. But, but that letter's in his handwriting, and... Now, don't you worry, Miss Betty. We'll find Joe, and we'll find the man who dry gulched your dad. How far is it to Mesa Canyon? Seven miles, due south. <laughs> 
And you positively guarantees that this year critter can talk? You heard him, didn't you? Yeah, but what I mean is, will he talk for me like he talks for you? Boy, I positively guarantees that he talks just as much for you as he did for me. Come on, give me the $12, will you? Looks like you've bought some stock, Dusty. Bob, I've got the only mule in the world that speaks English. Speaks English? Yep. Slim here said this mule's papa talks too. But he only speaks German. That's no good, cause nobody will understand him. This year mule speaks English. Dusty, did you ever hear of a ventriloquist? You don't mean to tell me that this here mule's one of them things. <laughs> no, not the mule, but Slim. Oh, well, that's all right. I don't care what he's suffering from, as long as the mule's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys, hit leather. We're going to take a quick look at Mesa Canyon. Which is the quickest way, Slim? Well, there ain't but one road, and it takes a bloodhound to find that. Speck a better ride in, would you? Okay, come on. Fellas, somebody in that burg has got old Joe Hawk tied and staked out. He was there on the 15th, and it's my notion that he's still there. Now, the best way to start will be to trickle in there one at a time. Keep your eyes and ears open. And meet back here at 5 o'clock. Oh, let's make it 4.30. I got to get back to the race by 5 o'clock to give my mule a singing lesson. Saddle my bronc and hit the trail. Almost time for roundup. Gonna follow them doggies wag and tail. Almost time for roundup. Almost time, almost time, almost time for roundup. Almost time, almost time, almost time for roundup. Tumbleweed stumble against the old drift fence. Almost time for roundup. And the groundhog acts like he's got some sense. Almost time for roundup. Almost time, almost time, almost time for roundup. Almost time, almost time, almost time for roundup. When the coyote howls at the harvest moon, almost time for roundup. And you know Jack Frost is a coming soon, almost time for roundup. Almost time, almost time, almost time for roundup. Almost time, almost time, almost time for roundup. When the willow tree leaves fall upside down, almost time for roundup. And the prairie dog burrows deep in 
the ground. Almost time for the... Strangers. Man talking to you. Me? He's looking right at you. Tell him where we're going. All I know is I'm going fast and far. Have a drink. Uh, I don't drink. Uh, he does. Bartender, give that man a drink. Well, I don't think I care about... Have a drink. Uh, I don't think I care about refusing any. <laughs> Have a cigar. Thank you. Take four. Thank you, thank you. Don't put them in your pocket, smoke them. Smoke all these? That's what I said. Bring me three more glasses. Fill them. Now drink them. All of them. All of them at once? Yep. Now you drink all that liquor. And you smoke all those cigars. And if you drop one drop of that whiskey, or you drop the ashes off one cigar, I'm gonna let the daylight into you. Come on, smoke up. Pop. Why, you having a little trouble, Dusty? Bob, that gentleman is just carrying hospitality too far. What's the big idea, fella? If you didn't have that gun, I'd show you. I wouldn't draw that, mister. Oh, boy. 
I guess I'll be leaving you. Leaving us? Guess again, brother, guess again. Make yourself at home while I rustle up some grub. Okay, Slim. Okay, Slim. Be with you in a minute, fellas. I'm going up and have a talk with Miss Betty. Oh, there you are, partner. How you doing? Now, look here, Mew. You might as well get this straight right now. I'm the boss. And when I talk to you, you answer me. You savvy that? Now, this kind of action ain't gonna get you no place with me. Now, there you go, showing your ignorance. Is that polite? I ask you. Say something. Dog on your hide. Hey, what's the matter, Dusty? What kind of a job is this? Well, that fool mule won't talk. Well, I don't believe he can talk. Not particular who I talk to. Was that the mule said that? Or was that you? You was looking right at me. Did I say anything? All right, we'll start all over again. Say something, uh, Gabriel. Okay, Tut. You see? You got to call him by his name. Yeah? What is his name? Gabriel. Go ahead, call him that. Mm-mm. Not now. Why not? You you go on away. That mule is just full of conversation when you standing around. Now what I craves to know is can he talk when you ain't here? Okay, cowboy. But remember the name. Gabriel. I say that, Gabriel, old fellow. How's tricks? Oh, I can't kick. You can't kick, eh? Well, that's fine. I'm glad to hear that. Now listen, Gabriel. Let's get on to business. I aims to teach you something. Who's going to teach which to what? I'm going to teach plenty to you. Ain't you heard? <laughs> Ain't I heard what? The teacher's got to know more than the pupil. Now, look here, Gabriel. I done paid $12 for your worthless hide. That's more than I'd pay for yours. Besides, I bet the money was stole. I never stole nothing in my whole life. No? What about them silver spurs you was wearing? I want them spurs playing poker with Slim. If that's stealing, well, I don't know. Sure is, when the deck's got six aces in it. I was beginning to understand why Slim was so willing to sell you. Ouch! and played around and she cut my bank rolled out oh, oh, oh forgot the payday blue roll the dice to my surprise not so nice to snake eyes and i never will get wise oh, oh, oh forgot the payday blue now i am confessing got that gambling craze will i learn my lesson oh i'll be broke for 
for 30 days. I can't trust at the store. I'm a bust and am I sore? I'll be broke for one month more. Ho, oh, oh, ho, got to pay day blue. Got to pay day blue. Got to pay day blue. I can't beg or borrow from my friends or boss, and it's to my sorrow. Maybe got to trade my horse, not a dime in my jeans. I can't buy pork and beans. Now I know what misery means. Oh, oh, oh got to pay day blue. Why can't I be thrifty? Must I spend my change? What comes when I'm fifty? And too old. You know nobody never got nothing from wheeling on a stick? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna get something with this. Where you going, Dusty? I'm going to get $12 with this. <laughs> Looks to me like Slim is in for some trouble. That's right, Bob. Dusty's on the warpath. Good <laughs> joke. <laughs> Ventriloquism in ten easy lessons. Hey, Slim, come here. Who's that? Well, that's Buck Fawn, the man that owns a big ranch that bought us on this place. Good morning, Miss Betty. Good, Good morning. morning. You look worried, Betty. What's on your mind? Mr. Thorn offered to buy the ranch. Of course, if Joe's alive, the place belongs to him. But if he's... Oh, Betty, don't give up so easy. I've got a hunch Joe's alive and well. And if he is, we'll find him. But it's been over a month now. And no trace of him. Say, what does Bug Thorn want with this place? He's got a thousand acres over there without a head of cattle on it. What does he want with more land? I don't know. He said he wanted to help me out. Oh, Bob, if we could only do something. About Joe, I mean. We'll do something. Bug Thorn wants to help her out. Why, that hombre wouldn't help his own mother out of a tub of boiling oil unless it was something in it for him. Did you say there's no cattle on his place? Nary a head. 
But he's got a tough-looking bunch of hands over there, though. And I'd like to know what for. Come on, Slim. Let's find out. Did she say she'd sell? No, not yet. She said the place belonged to her brother. And she couldn't sell it until she knew for certain that he was dead. Well, I guess that lets us know what to do with him, don't it? Yeah, we could fix it so she could find the body easy enough. I'm for making a last try to get him to sign before we... Ah, you make me sick. Always wanting to do everything the hard way. The sooner we get him out of the way, the better. I'm running this show, Pete. You tried your rough stuff on the old man. And what did it get him? Well, they can't hang you any higher for two killings than they can for one, if they catch you. Howdy. I'm Bob Blake, friend of Joe Jackson's. My name is Thorne. Don't bother to introduce me to your friend there. We've already met. What do you want with Joe Jackson's ranch? Who said I wanted it? Well, you do, don't you? No. I offered to buy it just to help the girl out. She can't do anything with it. Listen, let me give you a little advice. Go back where you came from and mind your own business. You might first find out what my business is. Well, what is it? My business is to find Joe Jackson. Or the man that killed him and his father. That guy is poison. You ought to let me drill him. Next time I will. That's a promise. What you make of that? Well, one thing, I'm sure there's something wrong with that outfit. Well, what's your next move? I wish I knew. Well, see you later. Hello, Dusty. How's you and Gable getting along these days? Fine. We had a long talk the other day. You don't say. Yep. I aim to teach him some poetry. Poetry? Oh, man, that mule can't recite no poetry. You crazy. I'll bet you $12 that mule will recite poetry before me and the boys pull out of here. Now, that's a bet. Shake on it. Say, Dusty, do you know how to play seven up? Never heard of it. But I'll play a little poker with you. Poker? Yeah, poker. All right. But with my cards. Come on. A little ride will do you good. I've got something I want to talk over with you. About Joe? Well, yes. But let's get going. We can talk later. What you been? Read them, boy, a full house. You sure get good hands when you deal. Give me another stack of chips. For what? I'll give you an IOU. Yeah, but who's going to sign it with cash? Stetson! matter, 
Uncle, is your mule sick? No, sir, Miss Betty. He's sound in wind and limb. Then why are you walking? Well, you see, the cinch strap broke, and I had nothing to fix it. Oh, we'll fix that in a jiffy. Mighty kind of you, sir. Bother with an old man like me. You're a stranger in these parts, aren't you? Yeah, my home's down Texas way. Texas is a mighty fine country. I was down there when I was a young man, but that was many years ago. Hey, you are, Uncle. What might your name be? My name's Bob Blake. Bob Blake? Are you from Pika? Why, yes. Well, I do declare, when you cast your bread upon the waters, it sure comes back to you. What do you mean? Two or three weeks ago, I found a letter addressed to you, and there's no stamp on it. So I put one on and mailed it to you. You mailed a letter to me? From Mesa Canyon? Is this the letter? That's the very one. Where'd you find this? I found it in the alley back of Buckthorn Saloon. Buckthorn Saloon. Are you sure of that? I'm dead certain. Found it right there lying in the dust. Buckthorn Saloon. Thank you, Uncle. You've done me a bigger favor than you'll ever know. So glad. Bye, Uncle. So long, Uncle. Goodbye. What do you make of that, Bob? How come Joe's letter to be lying in the alley? Well, here's how I figure. They're holding Joe at that buckthorn. They left him alone for a few minutes, and he scrawled out this note. Then he heard him coming back, and he tossed it out the window, hoping that somebody would find it and mail it. And that's just how it happened. Then you think Joe's alive? I'm sure of it, Betty. Well, what'll we do? Well, I'm going to the buckthorn and get Joe out of there. You'd better come back and get the boys. No, I'll do better playing a lone hand. Now, you get back to that ranch, and don't leave until I get there. And don't say anything to the boys about it. Alpha's depart. Erasure. Listen, brother, put your hand under that table just one small, just one small, and the next time you go to buy gloves, buy one. I'll call you how many cards you want. Give me two. Two? Yeah, two. 
I thought you said two. I'll take two. You don't open it, what's your bet? Hello, Miss Betty. Where's Slim? I don't know, Miss Betty. You want me to find him? Yes, tell him I want to see him right away. See you, Parker. Okay. So long, Dusty. I'll be seeing you. Say, you bring me a drink. Coming right up. Where do you think you're going? I'm going upstairs to the dining room. There ain't no dining room up there. You stay down here where you belong. Oh, champ. No dining room. This is a heck of a dump. Bring that drink. You mean to tell me Bob Blake went into the Buckthorn Saloon after what happened the last time he was there? He told me not to tell you, but I'm worried. You've got a right to be worried. Well, that place is a rattlesnake's den. I'll get the boys and get him out of there. And Joe, too, if he's there. I'll never sign that deed. I know what you're after. You found a ledge of gold on your property. And it petered out on your land and ran over on mine. I found it, too, the day you grabbed me. As long as you know so much, you may as well know one thing more. There's a million dollars in that ledge, and we're going to get it. On time. Mm. 
You should have let me finish him off the day he came to the ranch. She decided to help. Lord only knows where she's gone. Where's Joe? Where's my brother? Take it easy, young lady. Joe's okay. But that man came to the house and said that he was here and that he'd been hurt. He's here, all right. But he hasn't been hurt. Yet. What do you mean? Take me to him. All right. Come on. Joe! Betty, what are you doing here? That man came to the house and said you were here and that you were hurt. What's the idea, Thorne? Very simple. Now, you wouldn't want anything to happen to your sister, now would you? If you'll both be nice now and sign this deed, why, nobody will get hurt. But you offered to buy the ranch for $5,000. The offer is still good. That's certainly nice of you, Thorne, with a million dollars worth of gold on the property. Did you find anybody in Thorne's ranch? Nary a soul, but I didn't really expect to. Did Miss Betty show up? No. Where's Dusty? I got scared, so I sent him to fetch the sheriff. Well, I thought his horse went lame. It did. He's riding Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Will you sign? It's Joe's ranch, and if he won't sell it, I won't. All right, Jack. How about signing that paper? Listen, you yellow rat. You and your gang killed my father. And you may kill me, too. But you'll never get that ranch as long as I'm alive. Give me that iron. Stop them. Stop them, I tell you. You can't do that to them. Will you sign? No. Hold the boys. Hold the boys. Well, look, uh, there, there's Miss Betty's horse. It sure is. But where's Miss Betty? Suppose she's been thrown off? Oh, no, not Miss Betty. Well, let's follow this horse on the back trail. I saw him come out of that canyon. Come on, boys, hit letter.
Come on, boys. There, now let him go. Not so fast. Watch her, boys. Where do we stand now? We're no better off than we were. It's no good without his John Henry. But I'll get that too, as soon as I make him conscious. Yeah, but what do we do with him after he signs it? What do you think? Still feeling obstinate, Joe? I feel okay. The day they hang you. Where is this, a wild goose chase? That's Miss Betty Hall's over there, ain't it? Yeah, but where's Miss Jackson? How do I know? Where's Flynn? Where's everybody? Look here, Sheriff. A lot of horses just went through here, and from the looks of those prints, they left mighty sudden. Come on, boy, let's hear those tracks lead to them. You're the lowest rat that ever lived, but you can't be low enough to do that. Can I? Go ahead, Pete. Pete, you can settle your private score in a minute. In case I forget, remind me to kill you. Bring those others in over there. Let the girl go, Thorn. Listen, Buck, I'm tough as the next man. But shooting women is out of my line. Mine, too. But what are we going to do with her? She knows too much. Now, you listen to me. It's either them or us. Which will it be? As for me, I'd rather have the girl on my conscience than a rope around my neck. Get ready. Here comes the war. Hey, ready. Drop those guns. Hold in, men. Shoot to kill.
gun. I want to send a message and I don't want no answer. Special delivery. You found the right address. those cutthroats to jail, I'll be in to swear out a warrant for them for murdering my father. If I can take them to jail, a man, they'll practically in jail now. Come on, boys, take them to town. What's that? Did the man have his will all wrote out? <laughs> no, Dusty, this is a deed. Oh, don't be ignorant. It's a deed, his last will and testament. Oh, did he leave you all his property? Nope, I won't be needing his property. That's a million dollars worth of gold on mine. That's why they want it so bad. Let me shake your hand. That's plenty of money. Speaking of large sums of money, reminds me of our bet. What bet? Didn't you bet me $12 that I couldn't make that mule talk poetry? Yeah, but where's your $12? Man, I even own the clothes you're standing in. Well, I still got Gable in her. I'll bet you the mule against my clothes and my $12. Bet. Bob, hold the stakes here. Come on, hold the stake, Bob. Come on, let me see you make that mule go literary. Just keep your good eye on me, boy. There was an old geezer named Slim. I used to be owned by him. When the old rascal sold me, my new master told me he was gonna get Slim on a limb. Wait a minute, he ain't through yet. You may wonder why I'm mutilated. To admit it, I always have dreaded. But you all know Slim. I belong to him. Birds of a feather. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> you win, Dusty. Here's your money. Welcome home. Oh, don't look so bad, Slim. I'm going to give you back your old talking mule. I don't want him. I'm fixing to get married, and I don't want no talking mule around. No, mm mm. Mm mm. Well, guess I'll have to give him the bob. Bob ain't gonna want him. How come he won't? Look. Get along, you carry me.